Hello everybody and welcome back to Advanced Maths. Today we're looking at prime factorisation problems. So, what is prime factorisation? Here we have a number 75, I'm going to split it into its prime factors. 3 times 25, and 25 gets split into 5 times 5. If a number is prime, we're going to circle it. If a number is not prime, we're going to keep uh, factorising it like we do with 25. And so 75 is 3 times 5 times 5. We're just focusing on the prime numbers here. And therefore 75 is 3 times 5 squared. Now this is really useful. Because this is like a number's fingerprint. It tells us so much about the number. And it also tells us a lot about its factors and its multiples. And a few other things as well. So 75 is 3 times 5 squared, and that is like a number's mathematical fingerprint. Let's also do this with the number 360. We'll split that into 10 times 36. 10 is 2 times 5. Circle, circle. They are both prime. 36 is 6 times 6. And 6 is 2 times 3. We'll circle the 2 and the 3 because they are both prime. Okay. For this, you really should know your prime numbers. If you don't know your prime numbers, I will just revise that before we continue. I will link a, a, a page about that down below. So, uh, 360 is 2 times 2 times 2. There are three 2s circled, so we're going to write 2 cubed. 3 times 3, there are two threes, so it's 3 squared. And we've got 1 5. So the prime factorisation of 360 is 2 cubed times 3 squared times 5. And again, that is like its mathematical fingerprint. So prime factorisation is a way of writing numbers uh, as a product of its prime factors. Product meaning multiply, so you're multiplying its prime factors. It is useful for finding the highest common factor and lowest common factor of two numbers. Let's quickly look at how we can use this to find the highest common factor or lowest common multiple. So, highest common factor, we are going to multiply the common factors together. 75 and 360 both have a 3. And the lowest power of 3 that they both share is 1. 75 doesn't have 3 squared, it just has 3 to the power 1. So you're going to choose 3 to the power 1. They also both have a 5. And 360 doesn't have 5 squared, it just has 5 to the power 1. So you're going to choose the lowest power of 5 possible, and that's 5 to the power 1. So the highest common factor is 3 times 5, which is 15. We're multiplying the smallest power of 3 and the smallest power of 5 that they share. We are ignoring the 2s because they don't share any 2s. 75 doesn't have any 2s. That's the highest common factor. Now, lowest common multiple is choosing the highest power of each prime. So we choose 2 to the power 3, because the highest power of 2 is 3. We choose 3 squared, because the highest power of 3 is 2. Then we write 5 squared, because the highest power of 5 is 5 squared. Okay, that is how you find highest common factor and lowest common multiple. If you would like more on that, I have a video that I will link at the top of the screen and description for you on exactly finding highest common factor and lowest common multiple. And it explains it in a bit more detail for you. But let's continue. Let's look at some more challenging questions now. And of course, when we multiply those together, we get 1,800. You can use the calculator for that. Okay, so consider the number a is 2 to the power x times 3 to the power 4 times 7 to the power y. I express the following as products of prime factors. 8a, 10a, a squared, and then 3a squared. Let's focus on 8a first. This is 8 times our number. Uh, so we wrote it as 8 times 2 to the power x times 3 to the power 4 times 7 to the power y, which is what it gave us in the question. And what I can do is I can rewrite 8 as 2 cubed, because 8 is the same as 2 cubed. 
And now I've got 2 cubed times 2 to the power x times 3 to the power 4 times 7 to the power y. And when I've got 2 to the power cubed, 2 cubed times 2 to the power x, I can add the powers. And so I can write this as 2 to the power x plus 3. And we have written 8a as a product of its prime factors. And so the final answer is 2 to the power x plus 3 times 3 to the power 4 times 7 to the power y. And that is the final answer. Now let's look at 10a, that is 10 times our number, and we can rewrite uh, 10 as 2, to, 2 times 5. And so we can combine the powers of 2, and we've got 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the power x, we add the powers, that's 2 to the power x plus 1, times 2 to the power 5, times 3 to the power 4, times 7 to the power y, and that again is the final answer. A squared now, we're going to write our number squared. And when we're doing a power to a power, we just multiply the powers. So here I'm going to do 2 to the power 2x, because I've done x times 2. 3 to the power 8, I've done 4 times 2. And 7 to the power 2y, I've done y to the power 2. Now 3a to squared, that is the same as... 9a squared, because the 3 gets squared, because it's in the brackets. And therefore that is the same as 3 squared times 2 to the power 2x times 3 to the power 8 times 7 to the power 2y. And that blue part there we just stole from the previous answer because we already worked out a squared. And so we can uh, combine the powers of 3. We can add the powers of 3 and we get 3 to the power 10. And that is the final answer. We have now um, wrote all these numbers as products of prime factors. Excellent. Let's look at example 2 now. We're going to consider 8.4 times 10 to the power 23, and we want to write this as a product of its prime factors. And then we're going to consider c equals 2 to the power 31 times 3 squared times 5 to the power 30, and we want to write this in standard form. Okay, so let's look at part A first, and we've got 8.4 times 10 to the power 23. This is the same as 84 times 10 to the power 22. Now just think about why that is the case. Because 8.4 is the same as, uh, eight, um, sorry, 84 is the same as 8.4 times 10, and therefore 8.4 times 10 to the power 23 it's the same as 84 divided by 10. 84 divided by 10 is 8.4 times 10 to the power 23. And that means we've just got one less power of 10. And therefore we've got 8.4 times 10 to the power 22. So this is just two different ways of writing uh, the same number. In, uh, one with a decimal, one without a decimal. And of course, without a decimal is easier to handle because we talk about prime factors here. And prime factors work with whole numbers. And so we're going to uh, find the prime factors of 84. 84 is 2 times 42. 2 is prime. 42 is 6 times 7. 7 is prime. And 6 is 3 times 2. And 3 and 2 are both prime. So 84 is the same as 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, which is 2 squared times 3 times 7. Now 10 to the power 22, we can write that as... 2 to the power 22 times 5 to the power 22. That's really clever, that step, because we realise we can split up 10 into 2 times 5, and the powers of 10 have the same powers of 2 and 5. Very nice. Okay, now we're just going to combine the powers of 2. We get 2 to the power 24 times 3 times 5 to the power 22 times 7. So we've finally figured out what B is as a product of its prime factors. I think that's a really nice question, okay? You might want to re-watch that uh, example again if it was a bit quick, because there's a lot of information there. Now part C, uh, sorry, part B, we're going to find C in standard form. That's 2 to the power 20, 31 times 3 squared times 5 to the power 30. And we can write this as by splitting up the 2 to the power 31 as 2 times 2 to the power 30. That's 2 to the power 1 times 2 to the power 30. Because 
Um, it's nicer to write the 2 to the power 30 and 5 to the power 30 at the end because you can combine that into 1 10 to the power 30. So we can write it like this. Just look at what I've done so far. Look how I've split up the 2 to the power 31 and I've uh, done that cleverly so I can uh, write this as 10 to the power 30 on the end. And so what am I left with? I'm left with 2 times 3 squared, and that is 18 times 10 to the power 30. And that's the same as 1.8 times 10 times 10 to the power 30. I just wrote it, remember I'm writing it in standard form, I have to write a decimal at the start. I can't write a two-digit number at the start, so I have to write 1.8. And so this is, I can combine the powers of 10. This is 1.8 times 10 to the power 31, and that is the final answer. Very, very nice. Okay? You might want to re-watch some of the examples in today's video so you can digest it at your own pace. You may also want to pause the video before each question and try each question yourself now you've seen it once yourself and see if you can do it all from memory. If you'd like more practice on this, I've got some prime factorization questions on the website advancedmaths.com. So you can download uh, some worksheets on this for you to try yourself. This is a really, really nice topic and I think it will really help with your algebra and number theory understanding. Thank you for watching today's video from Advanced Maths. Remember to like and subscribe and you can also share it with your friends and family as well. We're covering GCSE, A-level and IB Maths with quick and simple explanations and new videos definitely are coming soon. Check out advancedmaths.com for more useful revision resources. Thank you for watching and good luck in your exams.